We have a huge Tesla stock price starting to increase from Dan Ives, who is in the top 100 Wall Street analysts, according to tip pranks. He increased his Tesla stock price target by almost 50%. It went from $215 to $300. One reason, of course, is Ford and GM partnering with Tesla to access the supercharger network. But mostly, I think it really only has to do with this going up. And by the way, Dan did say before that the market sentiment does influence his price targets. For example, when we had all of this Twitter drama, Dan Ives said that that compressed the Tesla stock multiple leading to lower Tesla stock price targets. And that had nothing to do, he said, basically, with the fundamentals of Tesla, but it did have to do with a sentiment around Tesla stock. While many analysts do not take sentiment supposedly into account, although they really still do, Dan Ives admits that he does. It's not something that I do, but it has been working for him this year. It put him in the top 100 of all of Wall Street analysts. Dan Ives was just on TV to discuss Tesla stock, so let's take a look at the full clip. Two thirds of the world is covered by water and the rest is covered by you, Dan Ives. There's a <laughs> lot of stocks in your universe that you cover, but Tesla's certainly right up there. What is it about the stock right now and the company that is giving you uh, so much bullishness? Yeah, I, th I think what's happening, it's really, it, it's a sum of the parts. I, I don't want to call it an AWS moment, uh, almost an Apple services moment for Tesla. Because what's starting to happen now is that the 313 area code, after years of resisting, they recognize they need Tesla. And I think when you look at the supercharger perspective from a revenue perspective, you go out 2025, GM Ford, they get 15% share. You're looking now an incremental of 3 billion, 4 billion a year of revenue that was not there. We know that Tesla aims for 10% profitability, all costs included for its charging business. And Dan Ives assumes that Tesla will bring in additional $4 billion in revenue just from Ford and GM charging its vehicles at Tesla's superchargers, which should be about $400 million in profit. We can roughly calculate how much supposedly this should add to Tesla's total stock price. We just need to take the total number of Tesla shares, which is three and a half billion. We use that number to divide the profit that we would generate from a supercharging business and we get 11 and a half cents per share in earnings. And if you want to assign today's Tesla stock price to earnings ratio of 72, you go back to earnings per share and you multiply that by 72 and you get about $8 added to Tesla stock. You can assign a lower multiple if you like, or you may project more revenue to be generated from Tesla's supercharging business. Either way, what is clear is that that business is going to make money and that will have a material impact on Tesla stock. While it's not a crazy impact, it is a material impact that we can measure. And it will be a bigger impact once every automaker in the US and everywhere else as well makes a deal with Tesla. And I think what's starting to happen right now for Tesla, from batteries to supercharger to storage, the sum of the parts thesis is now starting, I believe, in the early stages to play out with investors. That's really what's starting to happen now with the stock, in my opinion. To us retail Tesla stock investors, the energy storage business is no news, really. And especially after Ford signed that deal with Tesla, it was really obvious that other companies will follow. And now it just abundantly, extremely painfully obvious that pretty much everyone else will follow Ford and GM and they will also partner with Tesla to access Tesla superchargers. So Wall Street is a little bit late here. There is a another theory that, yeah, they he, he got them on the network and he got them on the technology, but that design, they have a hundred years of refreshing designs with high frequency and in the end that's going to mean better unit sales for the legacies than perhaps the Teslas. What do you think? He's saying it as if Tesla is not going to be able to refresh its own vehicles and he's saying it as if Tesla does not have the world's single best-selling vehicle in production right now. Every week we have new sightings of a refreshed Model 3 being tested on the streets and until now Tesla didn't really how to coordinate a major refresh between multiple factories for a vehicle that sells a lot of units every single year. 
So I understand why someone may want to question Tesla right now because the Model S and X refresh did not go exactly as planned, but that vehicle is not really important and I don't think Tesla is really paying much attention to the X and S and you could literally delete these two vehicles and it wouldn't make almost any difference to Tesla's business. But with the Model 3 refresh, I think Tesla is actually going to try. So if that's a concern for you, keep a close eye on how Tesla executes this and I think it will be just fine. And if for any reason there are major hiccups, Tesla will learn from these experiences and then later it will implement all of these learnings for the next refresh, which is going to be for Model Y, which is codenamed Juniper. But this one is going to be coming out much later after Model 3 refresh is actually released. The Model Y is expected to be refreshed in October of next year, but the Model 3 is expected to be refreshed within the next few months. Musk needs GM and Ford actually be successful for the broader EV vision in terms of just adoption in the United States. Move the curve, move the adoption curve move higher. And, yeah. and it's the jobs thesis, in other words, like from Apple, and I think that's really what's starting to play. And that's why right now you're seeing Farley and, and Mary ultimately partner with Musk because I believe this is just the first step. It's starting with superchargers. And ultimately, I think next step could be battery Batteries. technology. And I think that's the golden goose right now is that they've built the castle, waiting for others to call. Farley called, Mary called. And I think it's just the start of what I view, especially with demand that's, I view it stable in terms of, you know, we saw uh, coming out of our age checks being Asia the last few weeks. Margins, I think now are starting to trough out the next one to two quarters. And I think that's why investors right now are really starting to look at this in a different story. Until we see a pretty good ramp of 4680s, I'm having a difficult time seeing exactly why these other automakers would have the urgency to license the battery technology from Tesla. It is very obvious why they should want to access Tesla superchargers because without charging, you can't really sell vehicles easily. But speaking of batteries and specifically 4680s, Tesla has not mass produced these yet. So I think Ford and GM might be a little bit skeptical looking at this technology and they already pretty much proven that they would rather wait things out, for example, with EVs and be left behind instead of trying to adopt technology early. It would be really smart for them to license the battery technology from Tesla, but I don't think they are going to do it at least not anytime soon. They won't do it until they absolutely have to. Explain to our viewers just the revenue opportunity from these sure. charging stations. How does Tesla make money from them? What are other opportunities that it has from all these cars stopping at these stations? Sure, so 12,000 supercharger network. And when you start to think about it, they're really the only one. That's why range anxiety, why would a, you know, a Jim, a Dave, a Sarah not buy an actual technology, why would they not buy EVs? It's because of range anxiety. So now Supercharger, Tesla has it. They basically get, they make per charge. If now from a revenue perspective, services, we think by 2024, it's about 10 billion that we're talking about annually revenue, margins much higher than auto. So that's almost like software-like margins. Now, GM Ford, you get, let's call it a million cars on that network. That's incremental in the billions, two, three, four billion per year that was not there on an annuity. And I think that's why what you're starting, the reason I call it an AWS moment is I, I think for many years, AWS not really valued from an Amazon. Right. It, it, now all of a sudden, you that was You can throw a pretty part. high multiple on a recurring revenue stream like that, right? Apple services, okay, I'll assign 100 billion. You go back years ago today, we think it's worth 1.4 trillion. So that's why I view it in terms of, the reason I believe Musk is playing chess and others are playing checkers, you're now starting to see it play out. It almost sounds like Dan expects Tesla to make software-like margins from his supercharging business. I'm not really sure if he meant it exactly like that. Maybe he just misspoke. But I don't think it would be wise to go against Elon's guidance here. Elon is only guiding for 10% profitability from the charging business. What I'm a lot more excited about is full self-driving. Elon says that the rate of improvement is accelerating and no wonder because everyone who has full self-driving now can actually use full self-driving beta. That gives Tesla a lot more data. And check what Kevin is saying about this. I actually agree, using autopilot FSD features since 2017. 
I'd get used to, oh, I should take over here because it sucks here. I've already forgotten 99% of those hard spots and now find myself forgetting I was even in the driver's seat. I just feel like an attentive passenger. And it appears to me that Kevin is changing his sentiment about Tesla stuff here because check this out. So to the point, if it continues improving at even this pace, last six months, full autonomy is inevitable. Kevin did not say things like that before. Earlier, he didn't seem to care much about full self-driving and it didn't seem like he was really assigning any real value to full self-driving. He understood that, yeah, maybe it's a possibility, it will happen, and if it does, it will be very valuable, but maybe it won't, or if it does, it will take a very long time, but what he's saying now is very different. I'm still on the 11.36 version, and sometimes it's great, sometimes it's eh. I just had a drive of maybe 10 minutes through the city, here in Vancouver City, and I had to disengage maybe about six or eight times, and none of these were critical safety interventions. So that was good. And really, most of these interventions were just the car doing something that's totally safe and fine, but it would just look weird to anyone else driving, so I just did not want to be embarrassed. So I can't wait for this next version, and hopefully the next version won't embarrass me while driving as often as <laughs> this one. Because in many cases, it does work pretty well. Back in November, December, the car would just refuse to go through a certain place. It would just disengage immediately. Now, it pretty much, yeah, right now, actually every single time, at least it tries, and then it may make me feel uncomfortable, but usually it handles things just fine. But it does make me feel uncomfortable sometimes. So unless I'm trying to stress test it, I disengage. And now do me a favor and do not disengage yet, click the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet and YouTube wants you to watch this video and as usually YouTube is pretty good with its suggestions and in this video I talk about Tesla starting to advertise, my name is Matt Post, just like and subscribe if you haven't yet and I will see you in the next video, thank you so much for watching.